His presence and His glory. We your temple. Give you Hey. Ha. Yes, Lord. Hey! Yes, Lord. God is good. Arise from sleep. Hey. Bless the name of the Lord. Thank you for filling this place. Bishop Paul Martin. <clears throat> Thank you for filling. You know, that's a holy man. Thank you for filling. That's a holy man. We bless the name of the Lord this morning. How is everybody? You know, for the first time, I have to say hello to my wife because she's in Ghana and I'm here. So, hello, wife. How are you? God bless you. I've been talking to her, but you know, like, she's in Ghana and, and I'm in New York. I say, hello, wife. How are you? She's in Ghana. She, she, you know, the next time I come, praise the Lord. I'm prophesying that she will come with me. How about that? I prophesy so that prayer man told you officially meet her, okay? It is well. Listen, God is good. Listen, I said God is good. Guess what? You made it to the 1st of July. I know, I know, you know, these things don't excite people anymore. But I'm telling you, that's enough. Hey, I said that's enough. That's enough. You see what I'm saying? I said, that's enough for me to say, Jesus, ha, is a new chapter. And I'm going to grab it with both of my hands and make sure that I make the best of this man. Victory belongs to us. I said, victory belongs to us this morning. This brand new day is a new chapter, is a new season, is a new day. And I'm just saying it so that you know it will sound good, but it truly is a new day. It's a blessing to have the Spirit of the Lord with us this morning. It is a blessing to know that victory belongs to us. Listen, now I rose up this morning. I made some mistakes last month. I fell by the wayside. Some things came upon me that I couldn't shake off. But listen to me, I have made up in my mind that because He lives, because I'm able to stand. Listen to me. You know, the last time I came here in January, do you remember? 
I was struggling with the cold and you know it was cold and it was cold and it was cold and it was cold. Yesterday I decided to step out. You know, I stepped out. Now I'm like, hold on a minute. This place looks different. There's no more snow. You know, I can just wear a t-shirt and I was wearing some flip-flops and you know, I was able to go out. The last time I came, if I'm right, you know, I had to wear some thick, you know, shoes. You know, I had to put on a few layers. Thank you to Sister Cheryl, you know, who 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 caught the revelation. No, she got me something. To, otherwise, listen, she got me some gloves. I don't know how I would have handled the weather. Because I came empty. They didn't know what to expect. Do you see what I'm saying? So, you know, you have to understand. Listen, if the world that we live in understands seasons and times and, you know, the weather changes. Listen to me. Listen, the weather doesn't come and seek your permission before it changes. We are used to the cycle. We are used to the seasons. Listen, listen, and listen. Whether you like it, yes or no, you try. You try wear you a winter jacket or a winter coat. If you see somebody outside right now with some gloves on, with some coat and some woolly hat, you think that person is crazy. You know why? Because that person, what is now, is living outside of the season that we're currently experiencing. You see what I'm saying? Listen to me. And some of you, your season has changed and you don't even know it. That, listen, that is the saddest trick that the enemy can play on believers. That your season has changed, but you don't know it. Some of you, you're waiting for somebody to lay hands on you or somebody to take a microphone and prophesy some big, great prophecy. I'm telling you, your season has changed. I said, your season has changed. The fact that you made it to the first of July is an indication that your season has changed. The same way that you have put some clothes into your wardrobe, that you're not going to take it out till probably, you know, uh, September, October, is an indication to you that, listen to me, your season has changed. The weight of his glory. The weight of his... Listen to me. We've entered into a very, very, very important session and season of our lives and our walk with Christ. I came all the way from Accra, Ghana, via way of Lisbon, London, to let you know. that listen to me. If you don't believe, then I need you to, I need you to go get you some belief system. I wake you up. I want you to have a belief system on the inside of you. You better believe that, listen, your season. My goodness. You know why? Because you, be, you have become somebody who knows what prayer does. Who understands. You know, when I don't understand, I say, God, help me. Jesus, I need you to turn my life around. Holy Spirit, I need you to, I need you to invade my life. I need you to take control of my life. I don't just need you to come into my life. Ah, but I need you to be the author and the finisher. I want you to be the in-between. I want you to be the God who answers by fire. I want you to be the God that I can lean on. I want you to be the God of my life. Ah, I elect eliminate everything that is trying to take control of my life i eliminate everything that is trying to mess with me you know i asked god for two signs say god you know i was talking to one of my friends i said hey you know albert is crazy so what do you mean i said you know i never held no meeting in america before i said yeah I said, yeah, I, I know I haven't. Why are you going to hold a meeting in America for the first time and you're going to have a flyer and you're going to put no names on there? I said, I don't know. That's crazy, right? Because, you know, that's a sure sign that that kind of meeting is going to be a flop. No, you know, let me, let me engage you in the conversation that sometimes the devil has with you. You know, I know some of you like to pretend that, you know, you're always with God. But, you know, every now and again, see, in your quiet time, remember when... The devil was just now to Jesus onto an exceedingly high mountain. The tempter came. You see what I'm saying? Sometimes you don't need to invite. The tempter just comes. 
He said, ah, but you know, that's, 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 that's foolishness. You know, that, that, that ain't going to work. I said, yeah, you have a point. You know, you, you know, you, you, you really have a point. You know, you really have a point. But listen to me. I remember he told me this. He said, if I be lifted up. Do you remember that scripture? He said, if I be lifted up. See, in the secular world or in the world that we live in, see, you got to lift up the artist. You've got to lift up the athlete. You know, Nike will use certain people to advertise their stuff. Do you see what I'm saying? You know, when you see a Jordan, you know, because of the name. See, you go buy it because of the name that it is associated with. You know what I'm saying? Most products that we buy, see, they put a face to the product. Do you see what I'm saying? So they use somebody who's popular. You know, for a long time, Nike was using Tiger Woods. Until recently, when the you know when when his brand you know began to lose value, there was a time when he was the name. If you wanted something to sell, just put the name Tiger on it. All you need to do is give him some money, and Tiger, what just now, will endorse your product. And if and if Tiger endorses your pro your, your product, guess what? You're gonna sell out. But today. That same person, he's still alive, not as good as he used to be, found himself in some domestic issues, found himself having some issues. All of a sudden, all the major people that he was endorsing, that what is now, he made them millions of dollars, decided to drop him one after the other because what is now, he no longer has value. See how the world works. He no longer has value. In the eyes of the advertisers. Lance Armstrong. A very long time. He was used to market a lot of stuff. Made a whole lip of money. For a whole bunch of companies. Until. A scandal. Hit Lance Armstrong. Found out that he wasn't as truthful. As he projected himself to be. All of a sudden. Guess what. All the major players that he was using, or they were using him, dropped him. You ever heard of this guy called the Blade Runner from South Africa? The Blade Runner. Got himself in a whole bunch of mess. Something to do with his girlfriend, allegedly shot her to death. In South Africa. Found himself in prison. Found himself in the courthouse. Dr. Donna. And guess what happened? Again, all the major sponsors that he had dropped him. Ha! Yes, Lord. They dropped him. Because that's what they do best. See, when you have no value, see, when your brand begins to be accused of something, they drop you. You you remember that young lady? Oh, I just used to, you know, I used to love her. You know, uh, Marion Jones. Marion Jones. Used to win the 100 meters and the 200 meters. Nobody could touch Marion Jones. Marion Jones. Marion Jones was doing so well until, once again, a scandal hit Marion. Marion found herself in prison. She found herself in the courthouse. She did some time. Found her records all expunged, you know. Again, guess what? The people who were championing her, guess what they did to her? They dropped it like a hot cake. Oh, that's what they do best. Oh, that's what they do best. Whenever you find yourself in a place of desperation, these same people who adore you, guess what they do? They kick you down and they step on you. They destroy They put out statements disconnecting themselves from you because they now see you as a contaminant. You see you as a contaminant. But I'm so glad. Hey! Halalabasia. I'm so glad. I am so glad. You know the thing about Jesus? You know when you really begin to know he's real? It's not when things are going well for you. It's when you find yourself in a pit. 
is when you find yourself in a place. It's when you find yourself, you know, in a dark pit where everybody leaves you. That's when he shows up. See, when he was going through, he didn't show up. He waits for everybody to leave you. And then guess what? When they've left you, then he decides to show up. Bring that brother Lazarus to the courthouse and let him give us a little bit of his testimony, brother Lazarus. Uh, 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 brother Lazarus, what, 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 what happened to you? You know, Jesus was like, if I could use this word, you know, with all due respect, he was like a brother, like a friend to me. You know, he would come to the house, we would play, you know, we would joke, we would have conversations. You know, he was family. Then one day, I fell sick. And for a brief moment in time, I wasn't scared of the sickness because I knew that the healer of sicknesses was a friend of mine. And so I told my sisters, just call brother Jesus to come. He'll come and deal with this thing. So what is now? Messengers were dispatched to go and give word to Jesus that you know the Lazarus family, you know the family that you love? They need your help. Now the natural thing would have been for Jesus to say, hey, disciples, come on. Let's, let's shut down what we're doing here and let's go. Because my brother needs me. Uh, but guess what? When they got there, the response of Jesus wasn't what they expected. Please just bear with me because, you know, I'm just receiving this and I'm giving it to you. Uh, because most of the time we've seen the story through the eyes of the sisters. But I want to look at the text through the eyes of the young man, what is now, who would have felt the ultimate betrayal. Because in his time of need, in his hours of sickness, when he was on his last legs breathing or taking his last breath, he would have expected Jesus to be on his side. Because he is the master healer. He had shared stories with him about how he healed and how God used him to do this and to do that. Now that I need you, Dr. Donna, you're nowhere to be seen. Sister Cheryl, when I call you, you deliberately don't answer my calls. That's 21st century way of putting it. I know you can help me. I know. I ain't talking about me. I know you can. You know you can help me. Dr. Donna, like I know you can help me. Sister Nikisha, I know you can help me. See, we've seen the story through the eyes of the sisters and most of the time that is how he's preached. But this one, the Lord is just asking me, listen, look at the story through the eyes of the brother, Lazarus. He's dying and Jesus is talking. He sends the word back, telling them that, you know, I stop this sickness. It's not on the death, but it's the glory, you know, it's for the glory of God. Because when he got there, the sisters, you know, had you been here, you know, my brother would have really been alive. That's just a way of, you know, you know, condemning, you know, you know, had you been here, you know, my brother would really be alive. Because, you know, I thought at one point we were very important to you. Sister Melvina, I, you know, I thought, I thought there was a time. You know, when I was important, when you heard I was in trouble or, or I was in distress, you would pick up the phone and call me. There was a time when I was important to you. But for some reason in this season, you just kicked me to the curb. You don't care about me. And listen to me. You listen to me. Listen to me. Listen. Jesus being Jesus, what right just now, understood what was going on in that household. And it was for a greater glory. It was for a greater assignment. 
it was something that was listen now that was beyond human understanding that jesus needed you and listen to me there comes a time that's why listen to me you hear the old preachers say the old school preachers he may not come when you want him to come but he still is an on-time god see it don't make no sense because the time when you want him to come he will refuse to show up at that time but guess what he is still an on-time god be, be, because he, 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 I'm grateful that he doesn't work according to chronos, you know, according to the chronological time. He lives or he operates on a different time clock. Ha! My God. I said he works on a different time clock, saints. You know when you know he's going to come through for you? When you give up, your giving up is an invitation for God to step in. Because he's now saying, okay, now I have your attention. Your, your, your time of giving up. That's when he said, okay, so that when I break you through, you will not stand there and make it look as if it was because of your smartness and your intellectual ability. You will know that it's got absolutely nothing to do with you. You ain't got no power. It's all about Jesus. If I believe that, because listen to me, listen, even today, you know, people will, some stuff will happen to them and they will attribute it. Preachers will make you feel as though if it wasn't for them, that breakthrough wouldn't come. So now God is isolating his people, those who are called by his name. He is isolating you because he wants you to not that he needs it but what just now he wants you to get into the you know my mom said something to me on my way coming in she said you know what albert god is big she said god is bigger than big god is bigger than big the day that we capture if we can if it's possible the day that we are able to understand listen 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 and, and listen not by listen it, it is by it, it is the english language is limited when it comes to expressing how good and how wonderful god is i don't know about you but the english language challenges me i wish there was another language or maybe i could make up my own language to express how wonderful god is when you're in jesus trust me trust me when you're in jesus when you are in jesus what else what else what else now challenge everybody you know try to express who god is to you how good is he you say hallelujah but hallelujah you know can't really express but i know what you mean but you know what that still don't define who god is He's bigger than big. That's still. You're marvelous. That's still. See, see, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to quantify, but I can't quantify. I'm trying to quantify, but I can't. I'm trying to say he's, 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 he's magnificent. I'm trying to magnify him. But how do you magnify a God? Who is beyond magnification you are beautiful but he's more than beautiful this is the assurance and the confidence that i want you to have it says in the book of john chapter one he says in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god doesn't that, that doesn't that whole statement just just, just sound jumbled up jumbled up in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god let's take it back to the original what he was trying to say in the original language is in the beginning was the reason why 
And the reason why was with God. And the reason why was God. The word there is logos. The word logos. Where we get our, you know, psychology, L-O-G-Y, biology. See, all them sciences that has that word L-O-G-Y, the reason why. In the beginning was the reason why you're here. And the reason why was with God. And the reason why was God. And the day that you understand and you place value on the reason why, you will now begin to understand the reason why you're where you are and the reason why you're going through what you're going through. Listen to me. Only a few more days we're going to gather together. Only a few more days. Hey! Haba, sikotolaba. I thought he left me. Valaba diva, zibro, sikapasataya. I thought he left me. Hey! But he left me. Yes, Lord, I thank you and I appreciate you. I thought he left me. Hey, haba su me si pekapa. In a few days' time, we're gonna gather together. The Lord is going to fulfill His promises towards us. The promises was even given to us in that whilst we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. I received that. He's always with me. Christ died for us. Come with an expectation. Come with an expectation. He will blow your mind. He will blow your mind. In the name of Yeshua the Christ. Son of the living God. Bow your heads with me is a new is a new month. Father, we hand over this month to you. The chapters and the pages of this month belongs to you. In the land of the living, we are, and in the land of the living, we will stay. We will not be exterminated, we will not be wiped out, we shall not be destroyed. We will be vessels to be used of by God. Father, we dedicate our lives to you. We hand over everything, every key, we hand it over to you. Let your name be praised. And let your name be lifted up. Hey, Palalabasia, preserve us. Get us ready for what you're getting ready to do in our lives. For thine is the kingdom. The power and the glory forever and ever in Jesus' mighty name, amen. Are you blessed? Are you blessed? Get yourselves ready. Valava, Zibelebe, Sapa, Leprosikapasia. Get yourselves ready, women, sisters. Come with flat shoes, especially the morning sessions. You know, you can dress up for this church services in the evening. But trust me, come with some flat shoes. Listen, listen, you know, this season, you know, all of the, you know, like in the summer months, that's when you most of the time you see the enemy really at work because there's a whole relaxation. It's like a holiday vacation season. You know what I'm saying? Everybody takes off, you know, like around this season. That's when the enemy really rises up because even the church will become relaxed. We become relaxed. But this is really the time. This is really the time that we need to be prayerful. I don't need to say much. You know what God is going to do. I summon you to a call to prayer for those of you who can make it. Those of you who have registered, okay? Come. Even if you haven't registered, just turn up. Just turn up. Hey, in Jesus' mighty name, we're going to give the enemy a black eye. In the name of Yeshua the Christ, the Son of the Living God. I love you, prayer mantle. I love you, prayer mantle. I love you, prayer mantle. Doctor, don't I try to oh you know I wanted to call you, but you know my phone, because I, I was in Ghana trying to buy some credit to put on, but you know, but I'm gonna call you today. Okay, God has been good to us. Thank you so much. I'm excited and I'm expecting. I'm expecting something great. I'm expecting something great. I said, I'm expecting something great in Jesus' name. God bless you. God bless you. Ha!
Yes, Lord. We bless the name of the Lord in Jesus' mighty name. Have a blessed day. Okay? I'm still here, but you know, I need to start making my way. Okay? Oh, Dr. Donna. Okay, that's true. Okay, thank you, Dr. Donna. That's true. Okay? God bless you. God richly bless you, okay? Just give me some time. You know, let me, let me, let me, you know, let me just get my bearings right, okay? Let me get my bearings right. Know where I am and know my surroundings. But we're coming. It's going to be awesome. The power of God is going to be manifest. I can promise you that. Because trust me, I put him as the host. So he has to show up. When you walk into that building, he has to be there because he is the host. In Jesus' name. God bless you. Invite somebody. Share the flyer. You know, talk to somebody about it. Say, hey, let's go meet the Holy Ghost. Have you ever seen the Holy Ghost before? You know how we get excited. Oh, Jay-Z is coming to town. Beyonce is coming to town. This preacher is coming to town. Well, guess what? The Holy Ghost is coming to town. What do you mean? The Holy Ghost is going to be at, you know, this event on the 6th, 7th. Listen, let's go meet the Holy Ghost. You know how people queue up to meet their friends, you know, you know the stars? You know, they queue up to meet these superstar preachers. You know, they want to shake their hands. You know, I ain't against that. That's cool. That's fine. But guess what? Guess what? Let's go. What do you mean? Listen, the Holy Ghost is going to be in town. The Holy Ghost is going to be in North Carolina, in Charlotte. Hey! Palalabasia. Valava. Zibro. The star of stars is coming. The real superstar. See, see where that name come from? You know, everybody's a star, but there are superstars. You see what I'm saying? In every field, in every sporting arena, there are stars. But guess what? There is a true superstar. Well, guess what? The one and only. Nobody else qualifies for that title. The real, the original superstar is going to be in town on the 6th, the 7th, and the 8th of July. Come meet me. Come join the queue. Because I'm going to be in the queue to try to meet up with him. Trust me, when I get in the queue, I ain't going to give them my spot for you. As much as I love you, you need to, you will be, be everybody will be behind me. I'm going to be the first in the queue. Everybody will be behind me because I need to meet the Holy Ghost too. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. The 6th, the 7th, and the 8th. If you've registered, the, for all the information is on the web, you know, it's on Facebook, it's on the website, okay? The times and everything. Don't forget the time. It's not just evenings, it's in the mornings, morning sessions, afternoon sessions, you know, in an evening service, okay? If you need any more information, please email. We'll send it to you. But everything is out now. You should have, you should have everything now, okay? You should have everything now. But if you have any questions, just email us, okay? In Jesus' name. It is well. Jesus has made sure that it is well with us. I love you all. We are blessed and highly favored. In Jesus' name. Catch you later. Still in New York. It's nice and hot here. I'm beginning to enjoy New York. Last time I came out, I didn't like it. I wanted to go home. I mean, I still want to go home early because my wife is in Ghana, you know. But, you know, it's like, it's nice. It's nicer weather now. So, God bless you. Hey. Okay. Yes, Lord. Valava. Zibo. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. Good night. Good morning. Good afternoon. Whatever time zone you're in. God bless you. In Jesus' name. Bye-bye. Dr. Donna, if you can, why don't you call me on WhatsApp? Because just in case, okay, call me on WhatsApp after this prayer. God bless you. Somebody said good night. Good morning. Good afternoon. Whatever time zone you're in. Goodbye.